thank you everyone for joining us today for this D3 security webinar with Microsoft Sentinel. We'll be diving into how to solve the bi-directional sync problem. And we know that both as MSSPs or as enterprise customers, we're often asked um, how to enable bi-directional sync with a seam and how that's been a problem for security professionals and you know they kind of have to toggle between two different screens because you're uh, fixing something in your store and you're also looking at the same problem within the Microsoft Sentinel platform. Um, and uh, D3 Security is known for building out integrations for our customers, integrations that we build in our lab and test and ensure that our customers are able to use the technology that uh, they want to use in their tech stack. So we built one with Microsoft Sentinel, which um, a customer asked for and uh, and they really loved. And so we've got um, Eric Burkholder uh, from Microsoft speaking with Pierre Nujum from D3 Security, um, who and they're both going to be talking about the bi-directional sync problem, why it's a problem, um, and how we're kind of solving it together. So that's a little bit about uh, what you'll be seeing in the next 30 minutes. Now, before we get into the webinar, just a little housekeeping that I'd like to start with. As always, we'll be recording the webinar and it'll be available to you on demand. We will have a live Q&A session at the end. I encourage you to ask questions as they come into your mind. So you could always type them into the chat and we'll try and answer them on the fly. Alternatively, you could wait uh, till the end. We will have a live community and uh, that's also a good time to ask questions. The person who asks the best question receives a $50 gift voucher and um, uh, we are more than happy to give out more gift vouchers if uh, a lot of people have a lot of great questions. I reckon this is one of those where we will see a lot of questions coming our way. Um, before um, anything else, um, I'd like to welcome Eric. Uh, thank you, Eric, for joining us and really appreciate it if you could say hello and uh, introduce yourself to our audience. Thanks, Amardeep. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Burkholder. I lead the technology integration program for Microsoft Sentinel. Uh, we've actually been partnered with DC, D3 Security for some number of years. And actually, as I think about it now, we actually go back to a precursor uh, integration uh, with GSAPI. Uh, so we had a, an early integration even before Sentinel with D3. So we've been partners in uh, delivering function and value to you for, for a number of years. So thank you for the opportunity to present to you. I look forward to it. Pierre, would you like to uh, introduce yourself next? Thank you, Amardeep, and pleasure to join you here, Eric. My name is Pierre Nujem. I'm the product marketing manager here at D3. I'm responsible for showing potential customers how they can use D3 SOAR in unique ways. In particular, today we'll be walking through a solution that we built for one of our customers in the UK, and we were able to synchronize both Sentinel and D3 SOAR together. Um, so yeah, excited to be here. Oh, thanks, Pierre. Um, so we're going to talk about some, uh, some of the challenges associated with operating uh, environments with Sentinel that involve multiple customers, uh, multiple workspaces, and some of the uh, complications of switching between these instances and how we solve those problems together. Uh, we've been partnered with D3 Security on things like this for some number of years. Um, so we're very pleased to, to bring this uh, in to, to people's attention. Um, one of the interesting things about Sentinel being a multi-tenant uh, product is that customers will often have multiple workspaces. Customers will also have, uh, it's also possible for customers to have multiple tenants. And so one of the things that can often be a challenge is to um, synchronize the work that originates from each of these workspaces and each of these tenants. And this is often accomplished via a SOAR or integration with incident management or the, the incident management part of a, of a SOAR. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this today. Um, so one of the things that we're trying to do here is to help make this smoother, make this easier and provide a consistent view so that when you present to your SecOps teams a queue of work to do, it's complete, accurate and stateful. 
Pierre. Thank you, Eric. So when one of the customers approached us with this challenge, uh, we, we, we took the position for SOAR as a consolidator. So D3 SOAR in particular uh, is designed so that customers can do all of their incident response out of, out of the platform. They, there's case, full case management built in, there's orchestration across multiple tools. Um, and so vendor agnostic SOAR is particularly poised to solve this problem because it can integrate with any SIEM, any ITSM, any endpoint security tool, any email security tool, you name it. And so by being able to send and receive data uh, and trigger actions across all of the tools in a customer's environment, a vendor agnostic source solution can help keep all of the tools up to date with the most latest incident response updates and statuses. But just having this uh, integration capability and centralizing incident response into a single platform doesn't solve all of the problems. There's still some operational challenges uh, with consolidating incident response into a single platform, uh, which Eric will talk about here in this next slide. So one of the things that frequently happens uh, in operational environments is you have multiple teams working in concert to uh, both monitor, uh, mitigate, uh, and resolve, and remediate problems that happen on a system. Um, so with one team, you may have different views from another team. And so an opportunity exists to create a consolidated view. Another scenario that happens with this that can uh, be resolved with this exact same solution results from the fact that there are teams within uh, a company that own resources and the SecOps team, which are responsible for uh, making recommendations to those resources about configuration or uh, more specific things about changing policies to mitigate security events that happen. Um, these two teams often are diametrically opposed in the way that they work, meaning SecOps teams is very shoot first, ask questions later. The IT uh, SM teams and the IT service teams tend to be very change management driven, where they evaluate all the changes associated before they make a change and they get sign off from all the stakeholders. And the way that we help these teams work together are through uh, tickets and incidents and this flows into the activities that a SOAR can help us with in helping to route things to the right owners and make sure that each team has a clear and consistent and stately accurate view of an active incident. And so that's what's driven these bi-directional synchronizations that we're deploying with uh, D3 today. Pierre? Yeah, and uh, now that the... the the outline of the operational challenges are clear. There are some technical challenges that have, that have prevented other SOAR platforms from offering this solution. One is that the incident data in each tool is formatted differently. So there isn't just a quick and easy way to uh, set to receive data and then apply it. The second one is that the specific triggers are needed in order to send the data that uh, the corresponding tool needs um, at the right time. So for example, when a status is updated or when a new comment is updated, um, the, the tool where that change is being made has to be able to know when that change occurs and then send the relevant data uh, over to the partner tool. And the third, which I touched on, is each tool needs to be able to receive the data and update existing incidents in order to match. So these are the three technical challenges that our engineering team uh, tackled. And uh, the result of which was a happy customer. So we can see a quote here at the bottom said, of all the SOAR vendors that we approached, only D3 was willing and able to develop the bi-directional sync capabilities we needed. The solution built has enabled our team to greatly increase efficiency by working from a single platform. So thanks to Microsoft Sentinel's comprehensive features and capabilities, they were able to meet us on the other side of the customer's needs. And together we were able to build a solution that uh, made this customer, um, we, we went above and beyond their expectations as to what was available in the market. So how does this work at a high level? On the left-hand side, you can see when a change happens in Microsoft Sentinel, then a scheduled request from D3 to Sentinel is going to catch that as an update. 
any updated or new data is going to be ingested into the SOAR platform and then uh, implemented through playbook triggers. That's going to update the raw data of the incident inside of D3, so both platforms will be in sync. From the other way, when an incident is updated in D3, playbook triggers will catch that new data and push it to Microsoft Sentinel. Microsoft Sentinel is then able to receive that data and update the, the relevant fields inside of their incident dashboard. So that's a high level overview of the solution. Now, Eric, is there anything you'd like to add? Nope, I'm looking forward to the demo. Sure. So with that, I'll jump into a demonstration of uh, both tools right now and some of the synchronization capabilities. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is the investigation dashboard inside of D3. This should look pretty familiar to a lot of security professionals. This is a list of uh, open incidents and active incidents. So we've ingested these from Microsoft Sentinel, and we can see some corresponding fields such as the title, the status, the severity, and the incident number. So these should match our queue of incidents here in Sentinel as well. What we're gonna be looking at is for a particular incident for our testing. So let's look at uh, this third one from the top, 84517. And if we look here at Microsoft Sentinel, we can see it's here, 84517. So first we'll demonstrate the synchronization from D3 over to Sentinel. So let's say I'm an MSSP and I've just received this incident. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start working on it. So I'll change the status for open to in progress. And I'll make a couple other changes as well. I'll assign it to one of my colleagues. And then down in the notes section here, I will say incident is in progress, beginning to work out of E3, and then hit. So these are three changes that I've made from D3 going over to Sentinel. I've updated the progress, the status, the owner, and I've made a comment. So if we remember the number 84517, we can look here at incident 84517 inside of Microsoft Sentinel. We should be able to see that the status is now active. The owner is my colleague here. And we have a comment that the incident is in progress beginning to work out of D3. Uh, looks like one was activated, so I'll go back to the one we're working on, 84517. So that's a demonstration of the uh, capability from D3 to Sentinel. And now let's say uh, I'm the client working out of Microsoft Sentinel and I wanna make a couple of changes. So let's say I change the severity from high to low hit apply, and then I add a comment that says, after review, incident, after review, incident severity has decreased. And I'll hit send here. So this is from Sentinel back to D3, 84517. Let's go back into D3 and we'll just walk through the playbook uh, to show a little bit about uh, how this works behind the scenes. So one of the main features within D3 that enables this capability is the playbook trigger feature here. So not all workflows need to need to have a new incident adjusted in order to trigger. Using playbook triggers, we can have new workflows that, uh, that trigger um, after certain changes are made to an incident, such as a new note being added, the owner being changed, the severity being updated, or the incident being closed. So when we first go and send a change from D3 over to Sentinel, that's gonna trigger either on incident change or on incident status change. And if we work through one of these workflows, we can see that, for example, let's say a new note was added or updated, we'll grab the note from D3, we'll update the comment inside Sentinel, and we'll run a loop here to check and make sure whether or not this was successfully attempted or not. Sometimes if you make multiple changes at the same time, uh, one or two of these will error out. And so we need to add a, a delay, a counter, and then a loop in order to retry uh, the API and then make sure that that comment uh, was successfully added. A similar process happens for a status change. So let's say it's either in progress or open. We'll get the new, we'll get the new status and send it from D3 over to Sentinel. Then we'll check to make sure that this successfully worked. And then if not, we'll add a delay and we'll loop back over and try again after three seconds. 
So this is a pretty robust way to make sure all the information inside of D3 is forwarded to Sentinel when needed. Um, what I'll quickly go over as well is actually the ingestion from, Sentin from D3 to Sentinel and how it works to get updated fields. So inside of D3, we, we created this scheduled request. So every minute, as you can see here, we're sending a request from D3 over to Sentinel, and we're looking for the last modified time of our incidents. Then what we're gonna, what we receive back are all of these key fields. So incident number, status, severity, owner, creation date, and a few more. These fields are mapped directly to fields inside of the D3 incident. And if there are any changes between the existing data and the new data we receive, then we'll be able to, then the platform goes in and updates those fields. For example, here we can see the incident 84517. This has been updated to severity low, uh, which is the change we made inside of Sentinel. And down here in the comments, we can see the comment from Sentinel after review incident severity has decreased. So there's one more demonstration that we'll make. So that's incident closure. Inside of Sentinel, there are specific fields that need to be filled out. It's the classification reason. Uh, so here we'll go inaccurate data and mark it as a false positive. Then I'll hit save. And we can see it tagged here inside of D3. Now it'll allow me to come up and close the incident. So I can do that. The incident status is now closed. When back and look, we should see a new trigger workflow here on incident close. We come down, we can see a short delay to get the closure note, if there is one, and then go in and update it inside of Sentinel. So if we come back here into Sentinel and we do a refresh, we should be able to see that the status of 84517 here is now closed. And coming down, we can see the most recent and uh, the reason for closing, false positive inaccurate data. So here's the demonstration. This is how we keep incident and case details up to date between the two platforms. Eric, is there anything you wanted to add? No, it's a brilliant demo. And I would like to uh, call out where this brings into sort of the partnerships that we can do, um, specifically with D3. Um, D3 has insight into uh, the human powered processes of a SecOps team that may not be represented in Sentinel. We may have lots of automations that'll pull in a lot of data, a lot of information and really facilitate uh, that information gathering section of, of an investigative process. But being able to tie that to the human powered processes and the need to escalate uh, and promote uh, via time basis are things that we can work together on. And these are all things that help you manage the SLA that you have as an MSSP to your customer. And so it's through these types of integrations that we can collaborate well and create effectiveness for you. So let me hand it back off to uh, Amardeep. I think that uh, we've got a few uh, closing points to make. Thanks, Pierre. Um, appreciate that. So we're at the time where um, we get into the Q&A and I'm sure that a lot of you have questions. I noticed that there are a few that came in chat earlier and uh, we're gonna start uh, addressing them one by one. So that was a really good demo um, and we received quite a bunch of questions. Um, the first one is, um, how does the integration handle large data volumes? And what about missing updates? Um, Pierre, do you want to take this question? Sure. Yeah. So the uh, the platform D3, it operates in two levels. One is the event level and the other is the incident level. So these updates are collected at the event level. And there we use MongoDB and also Kubernetes uh, in order to make sure we're scaling up and down the services that are required in order to process all the data. Uh, in addition, there's also a tolerance scope, so look back period. And so with every request, we're not only looking out for new data that's been generated within the specific uh, start and end time, but we're also looking backwards into time a few minutes in order to see if there's any data that you know perhaps there was an issue with uh, it being recorded in the database. Okay. Um, when an alert is 
correlated in Sentinel, what happens in D3? Uh, if an alert is re-correlated in Sentinel, we'll ingest the alert again, uh, but it will be created as a brand new incident inside of D3, just to make sure that it's it's up to date, basically. Okay. Um, and then the question from uh, Muhammad Umar is, in terms of integration, what parameters does D3 require the other security tools to have in order to build the integration? Is the integration charged to the client or is it a part of the D3 offering? So the Sentinel integration within D3 requires a few parameters like the client ID, the tenant ID, the client secret. Um, it also requires specific permissions based on which commands you want to use. So those permissions will be inherited by the user that generated the API token. And uh, the Microsoft Sentinel licenses are billed separately. However, we are part of the MISA partnership program and that gives customers access to credits. But Amardeep, you can probably elaborate on that a little bit more. Sure. Um, I, I have a question that's specific to that. So I'll come back to that later. Okay. Um, but Eric, uh, maybe the next question is um, is is for you. How do the solutions facilitate collaboration between different teams across different departments? Uh, great job. Yeah, we have all these challenges associated with different swim lanes that have emerged from uh, our long history of operating technology in our companies. Um, and so uh, being able to clearly de delineate uh, between responsibility uh, scopes is important. And so tickets are, are a great way of doing that. It's, it's a very common way across the security and operational scopes today. Um, as we've begun to experiment more with um, uh, how incident management actually applies across other teams, uh, this is something that actually happens within Microsoft as well. Uh, we do this with tickets uh, with our own support teams. Um, so we have uh, uh, internal concepts where we do um, uh, almost sort of case exchange between different teams uh, and handoffs. Um, so at the end of the day, it all really boils down to the ticket and making sure that all the components of a ticket or an incident uh, are represented meaning that each appropriate swim lane and each system that may, that swim lane may be using to manage their own work uh, is represented. And so these kinds of integrations are very, very important in that. Okay. Um, the next one is, does D3 provide those tasks or playbooks presented in the update incident playbook as a template available to your clients? And does D3 have plans to turn that playbook into a native connector that makes those bi-directional capabilities available right out of the box uh, here? Would you like yes. To so the first answer to the question is no, they're not out of the box playbooks right now. They were built uh, bespoke for the client that requested it. Um, but the second, your second point is that yes, we are planning to build in uh, a more out of the box capability so that this can be activated for not only Sentinel, but other seams and other ITSM tools as well. And and I want to add on that those uh, those connectors that we build, the integrations that we build are actually out of the box. So uh, the D3 platform comes with the integrations. Um, the playbooks, however, are built based on um, the business logic that your organization needs. Okay, so in situations where multiple incidents are uh, collated. How does D3 SmartSort link them after syncing them with Sentinel? They can be linked in uh, a couple different ways inside of D3. One is by artifacts. So we have a utility command out of the box that is literally called the link artifact related incidents. So what that'll do is it'll look at any of the uh, artifacts attached to all of the incidents inside of D3, and then it'll automatically link them. Uh, that's probably the most common way that we see relationships being connected inside of D3 incidents. The other one is at the event level. So you can look for common values, for example, the same device or user that's been involved in a particular alert, and then you can attach incoming alerts uh, to pre-existing incidents instead of creating new ones. Okay, thank you. 
Um, Eric, the next one is probably better answered by you. It says, can users create custom rules in Sentinel that specifically respond to updates coming from D3? And how are those rules managed? Um, the answer is yes, you can. Um, there's a concept of uh, the uh, an always running rule called an analytic, and the integration then would be through data, so or through the incident itself. So, for example, uh, as updates come in from originating from the SOAR coming into Sentinel, we will see that as an update on the uh, incident itself. Um, there is a trigger that you can attach workflows to. So it's workflows that operate within Sentinel. Uh, and so, yes, you can build custom rules that do activities within the SIM that are triggered off updates that come from D3. Uh, and you can also uh, link uh, and group things in a similar fashion within Sentinel, meaning the, the way that we recognize related incidents in Sentinel is very similar to the way that that happens, uh, as Pierre just described. Uh, where we group things via artifact type or entity type uh, and, and put that into the graph. And so as updates are coming in from D3 that update any of the entities associated with the incident, which are things that they can do, um, those will automatically run. So there's an opportunity to take advantage of some built-in things that just happen automatically. And, and uh, then there are things that you can customize and you can attach those to triggers and do all kinds of magic with that. Nice. Nice. That's a great answer. Thank you, Eric. Um, the next one is from an efficiency standpoint, what is optimal? Having alerts, say from an EDR, go straight into Sentinel and then D3, or is there an option going straight to D3? Here, do you want to um, articulate your response on that? Uh, yeah, I think if you're an MSSP serving an enterprise, it makes sense to push them into both so that your client can, they'll probably do most of their ticket handling out of their seam. So keep it in Sentinel and then adjust them into D3. And then with this solution, you can keep them both, you can keep them both synchronized. I would say if you're doing your incident management in both Sentinel and CrowdStrike, then it can make sense to ingest all of it into D3 and then use the orchestration to kind of push updates to the different tools and keep your incident handling out of uh, out of a single platform. Okay, the, the next one is, uh, can you explain a use case where we need both Sentinel and D3 um, as Sentinel also has a source solution? Uh, yeah, so D3 particularly shines when you have, um, when you have tools that are from various different vendors. Uh, and so we've really, we've researched all the different vendors and we build the integrations to be pretty, uh, pretty robust. So they have built in, uh, they handle multiple inputs. They have uh, looping built in. You can do like um, SSH based credentials directly into the integration code. Um, and the, so it, it gives you quite a few more options in terms of automation to various tools uh, working out of D3. Yeah. Um... Thanks, Pierre. The next question is on the D3 and Microsoft relationship. Um, so I'm going to answer that, Eric, and then ask you to chime in. So D3 is an ISV, and we've been partnered with Microsoft for a long, long time. We are a longstanding member of the MISA program, which is the Microsoft Intelligence Security Association. We have worked and closely developed integrations with Azure uh, products, Intune, Sentinel, Defender, Office 365 for a number of years. We were also a finalist at the MISA Security Awards in 2023, uh, and we were nominated for the in, under the Security Trailblazer category. Um, very recently, we've, we were invited to the Microsoft Copilot for Security Partner Preview. And uh, we are working to build some very impactful collaborations with Microsoft. Um, the D3 platform is also architected in Azure. Um, so we've got a very um, thick relationship and we're great friends with Microsoft, as I see it. Um, Eric, anything you want to add to that? 
No, I completely agree. Uh, we've been working on a lot of projects together over the years, and you are well distributed in the integrations across all of our security stack, which is a fairly extensive stack at this point. So kudos for keeping up with us because it's a big challenge um, and making all of that automation available to customers. Thanks, Eric. Um, so the the next question is, and we're you know, going to take the last two questions now, um, just in the interest of everybody's time. But the next question is, in terms of multi-tenancy, what can be expected, be the expected latency between both the tools working in sync? Uh, Pierre, maybe you want to take a stab at that. Uh, sure. There is up to a 60 second delay with the current design when you're, when we're pulling in updates from Sentinel to D3. However, we're looking to change the solution so that we remove that so it could just be uh, up to a second. Uh, the reason that is is because currently, as I uh, showed, the D3 solution is querying Sentinel for updates uh, and then uh, uh, incorporating those updates. However, we can use playbook triggers inside of incident inside of Sentinel itself to push those updates uh, to D3, which would remove that one minute uh, window. Okay. Um, the 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 next question is, uh, and I think this might already have been answered, uh, but I'll still read the question out just uh, you know out of respect for the attendee. Um, will the D three playbook be waiting for an update on the Sentinel incident and then again execute the playbook, or when an incident is updated in Sentinel, a new incident will be created in D three? and then the playbook will, will run. So we won't recreate the incident. It'll be the same playbook, but it'll just be the particular workflow attached to the relevant trigger inside of that play inside of that incident that will re-trigger. So if a change is made to the incident, like a status or a comment, then that playbook trigger, the workflow attached to that trigger will, will run again. Uh, the whole playbook won't run again, and we won't be recreating another incident. Okay, guys, um, I I'm going to ask you because we have still have questions coming in. Are you okay to stay a few more minutes and answer them all? I'm fine. I'm good, yeah. Okay, okay, great. So next question, uh, multiple Defender solutions are now on Microsoft 365 Defender platform. Are there plans to develop M365 Defender so to accommodate all the Defender solutions? Pierre, that sounds like a you answer, a you question. Okay. Um, so I'm not extremely familiar with how the consolidated solution in Defender is going to change the uh, the API uh, for the various tools. So I can't answer that right now. I can say that all of the Defender tools are already built out as integrations inside of D3. Um, and then... Of course, our team, you know, will be researching any updates and updating them as needed because these are critical. We have many customers that rely on the Microsoft suite, so uh, you can uh, you can know that if there are critical changes to the API that require an update, we'll we'll be on top of that. Okay, um, which is optimal: running the playbook on Sentinel or ingesting the Sentinel incident into D three and then running D three playbooks? I feel this also may have already been answered, but uh, maybe we can elaborate once more. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, I think the core value of D3 in this particular case comes out when you're doing incident response on multiple platforms and then using, you can consolidate all of that work into D3. However, if you just have Sentinel and you're an enterprise team and you're all working out of Sentinel and that works, then you may not need D3 unless you have to automate uh, actions across various other tools, in which case the playbooks can help. Um, but uh, yeah, I think for this particular use case, if if you want to centralize activity on one platform, then uh, re-ingesting them into D3 brings a lot of value. Okay. Um, the next question, which is probably the last, is we have two sims, Sentinel and Splunk. How would that work in D3? Um. Pretty similar. You can ingest uh, alerts from both tools into D3, and then any changes made inside of the incidents will be reflected back in those tools. So yeah, uh, 
kind of a similar answer. It it helps to consolidate work. Okay, that's that's all the questions we had. Um, but I also put in our email in the chat for everybody. So if you have more questions that you'd like answered, either from Eric or Pierre, you could send them over to us and I'll try and make sure to get an answer over to you. Um, I want to thank all the attendees for taking the time to attend this webinar and Eric and Pierre, of course, a big thank you to both of you for making time for the webinar and the live Q&A. Yep, of course. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to present with you.